Welcome everyone. Today I wanted to teach you guys how to set up a nav mesh based loot spawner. This is a simplified version of the one I use in my game Wildkins to distribute loot all over the map in a random fashion. The spawner gives you a good amount of control on where you want items to spawn. This is a basic version of it but I think it's a cool way to spawn loot and we'll go step by step on setting it up so you can add it to your game. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we have a brand new scene with the terrain set up here. Uh, you guys are going to need to install the AI navigation package. Once you have that installed, that gives you access to everything related to the navigation. Now you're going to have to click on your terrain and you're going to want to add the nav mesh surface component. And this will give you the option to bake. And if you don't see anything on your terrain up at the top right, there'll be a toggle visibility of all gizmos. And this should allow you to see your baked nav mesh now on the scene. So now what we'll do is we will add our loot spawner. I have a game object here called loot spawner and I already have my script nav mesh loot spawner. So we'll go ahead and open that up. Now you're going to want to be using the unity engine this is going to give, allow us to call things on the nav mesh. So first we'll set up our variables. We'll have a public enum, and this is going to be our spawn shape. And we'll have two shapes. We either have a circle or a box. Next, we'll want to do a couple of variables. So we will have our game object array, and this will be our loot items. We will have a integer. This will be our spawn count. We'll also need a float for our spawn radius. And we're going to have a spawn shape. And we'll default that to circle. And our next variable is going to be a vector two, and this will be our box size. And then we are going to need a vector three, and this is going to be our spawning offset. And this will just be if certain items spawn high, too high or too low, we can add an offset to it. So the very first thing that we'll do is we want to have a, a private void on draw gizmos selected. What this is going to be able to do is have us be able to see kind of an overview of how big our radius is in the game world. So we'll have a switch statement here, depending on the spawn shape. And our first case is going to be, if it is a circle, then we will have gizmos.draw, draw wire sphere. And it'll be from our transform position and it'll be our spawn radius and we'll have a break. Second case is going to be if it is a box. And for this, we'll need to make a size. And it's going to be box size dot x, zero, box size dot y. Then for this, we'll do a gizmos dot draw wire and we want this to be a cube, our transform position and our size. Include a break. And then we need a default, which we're just going to break. Okay, so with that set up, if you go back over into the game window and you grab the loot spawner and you give it some values, maybe 25, you can see that we get a wire sphere. 
And this just gives us a good visual of where things can spawn. If we set it to a box and we set the box size to 15 by 15 or 35 by 35, we can see now that we have an area in which uh, things will spawn. So going back over, the next method we want to do is we want to find a valid nav mesh spawn point. And this is going to take in a center. This is also going to take in a radius. So we're going to have our return variable here, which is going to be a random point. And we'll have another switch. And this is depending on the spawn shape. So our first case will be our spawn shape circle. And this is going to say random point is equal to center plus random dot inside unit sphere. And we want to multiply this by the radius. The second case is going to be if we have a box. Now this one is a bit more complicated. We have to create a half width dot x and we'll multiply that by 0 0.5. The second one is going to be the half height, which is equal to box size dot y. And we'll multiply that by 0 0.5. So then our random point will be equal to the center plus new vector three random dot range. And it's going to be negative half width half, half, uh, positive half width, sorry. Zero. And random dot range, negative half height, and positive half height. And then we're gonna break. The default. So default is we will just return center and then we will break. Now we need to make sure that this is a proper nav spot. So I'm going to call nav mesh dot sample position and we'll pass in our random point. Hit our radius and we'll call nav mesh all areas. Now you can set this if you have certain areas defined on your nav mesh and uh, you can change this so that there's only very specific spots on the nav mesh that you want it to spawn. In this case, we're just going to use all areas. And if it is a valid point, then we'll return the hit dot position else we'll return center and we'll give ourselves a debug.log and we'll say couldn't find valid position spawning and center so for our next method we will do spawn loop now for this we're going to want to do a for loop for however many items we want to spawn. And for each one, we need to get a position. And we'll pass in our transform.position and our spawn radius. And whatever item we want to spawn, say item to spawn is equal to loot items and we want to grab a random item so whatever that item will be we'll go ahead and instantiate it and we'll do item to spawn 
the random point and quaternion.identity. This is just going to keep it to its prefab rotation. And we'll include the offset here, spawning offset. Then at the start, we can just say spawn root. So when we come back over here, I do have some cubes set up, a red cube and a blue cube. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna add a nav mesh obstacle and set carve. Now what this is gonna do is when this item spawns, it's going to create a hole in the nav mesh and this is gonna prevent duplicate items from spawning on top of each other. So then for the loot spawner, we can go ahead and drag our red cube and our blue cube in and we will have it spawn, let's just say 15 items. So when we hit play, it should spawn those within the bounds that we set. So you wanna try and get it to be within a good amount of the nav mesh. Otherwise, if it's too much bigger than its area, it can get a little wonky on the spawning. But as you can see, it just picks valid sp spots and spawns them. Now, there's a lot you could do with this. This is just a very, very simple loot spawner for picking random points on the nav mesh. If you guys want me to go more in depth on how to make this more complicated or set up rarities, uh, maybe it'll spawn more red cubes than blue cubes. Maybe there's a green cube that's very rare. Uh, let me know. I just wanted to show you guys a very basic way to do this. Um, there's a lot you can do with this. It does have its own issues. Um, sometimes you really have to make sure that your nav mesh is baked properly. You could have voids or small areas where you don't want loot to spawn, but it's still got nav mesh baked on it. So one of the last things I will show you guys is sometimes you can have a cliff like this. And when you bake your nav mesh, you'll get a point up here, which you don't want loot to spawn up here. Sometimes with the minimum region area at the bottom right here, sometimes you can set this high enough to where it will remove these small areas. If that's not the case, what I do sometimes, depending on how much effort it'll be, so I'll create a blocker and I'll set that over it and I'll add a nav mesh modifier to this. I'll override the area and I'll set it to not walkable. So I'll just show you guys, say this was set to one and this baked right here. I could turn this cube on and then I could bake. And then when I remove this cube, it doesn't spawn anything up there. And that's about it, you guys. If you like this, let me know. If you didn't, let me know. Hopefully this uh, helps some of you guys if you wanna add it into your game. And let me know what else you guys wanna see. So I'll see you guys on the next one.